Can I Tom? He's he's back again. And we got uh, Deacon Yawasop here. Let's get a load of hand. Yeah, yeah. Bishop, you talking about guests. I thought they knew guests here. He's oh, next door. Hey, I, I mean, I want to applaud for the brother Deacon Yawasop. We haven't seen you for a while. Lord, praises to the Most High. Uh, happy to be here with you today on the Sabbath day. So we come together and we fellowship in the Lord. And um, and I'm back with the with the with the whole gang. So that's a pretty good thing, you know. So we want to continue to move in the spirit of unity and love, and apply these commandments to our lives. And uh, let us continue to hold the line. Okay, hold that line. See, people in the Carolinas they know about that thing. Uh, hold that line. You know, so uh, we got a lot more work to do, and uh, let us keep building. We're not looking back. We're looking forward. We've got too much work in, ahead of us. We don't have time to play games with hoodlums on the sidelines. Y'all all right? All right. All praise. All praise to the Lord. All right. Well, today we're going to go into another lesson. As I said before, I'm going to take you all through the book, and if you get it, you get it. If you don't, maybe you'll study your notes and you'll catch it next year. Or five years from now, but one day you will catch it. So we're going to open up with our Matthew chapter 6. Today's class is Revelation 21, thy kingdom come. Revelation 21, thy kingdom come. Let's open up with Matthew, the sixth chapter, and let's start at verse 9. The book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh, oh, Lava, it's hallowed be thy name. You know that's Hebrew, Bishop. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it come okay. out like it's English, but it's, not. <laughs> it's the P version of the Hebrew. <laughs> Honor be thy name. <laughs> um, so who's reading for me? Officer Leon Bishop. Okay. Good. Read that again. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. After this manner, therefore, pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Stop right there. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So the thought of understanding is that the kingdom is coming on earth. I hear many a Christian say, when I go up to heaven. That is not what the Lord said. You're not going to the upper room. The scripture says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth, in earth, in earth, in earth. Can y'all tell a Christian that says in earth? I'm reading is fundamental. I thought it's about the by and by. No more Christians, they just annoy me. From there, from there. I just wanted to... Uh, Let's precept that with Deuteronomy 11, 21, I think it is. You know, I got to follow behind Liam. I'm telling him to get the scripture last week. And I said, is that the scripture I want? He says, yeah, I'm looking at the tape. That is not what I wanted. Thank you, Liam. Sorry. Yes, sir. <laughs> Deuteronomy 11, verse 21. Now, is that what I want? Yes. Okay, let's hear yes, it. Yes, <laughs> Deuteronomy 11, verse 21. That your days may be multiplied. And the days of your children and the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them. As the days of heaven upon the earth. That's what I want. As the days of heaven upon the earth. Can we write T.D. Jakes a letter and Creflo and Juanita and all of them? And let them know, let the congregants know. You are not growing wings flying up to the by and by. You're not playing harps on clouds eating catfish and smoking cigars. That's not happening. Ain't no crack in the kingdom. Everything will be on earth. On earth. Wow. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. So, from there, from there, let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 21, and verse 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. 
For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Now, the next thought, the next Christian thought is, the earth and the heavens will explode and be gone. Oh, gosh, you can't make this stuff up. Get Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 4, regarding the new earth. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 4. Ecclesiastes 1 and 4. One generation passeth away, mm -hmm. and another generation cometh. Meaning what? Those souls always come back. Now, that's a heavy chapter, but that's for another class. But it's starting off telling you about regeneration. Go ahead. But the earth abideth forever. Right. The earth, which says, but the earth abides forever, because the earth does not go away, didn't come back, like generations do. The earth abides forever. Ever. So let's go back to Revelation 21 and 1 again. So, what does this mean? Revelation 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So, all it means a change of worlds, a change of kingdoms. That's what it's talking about. For example, let me show you that. Give me Daniel 7 and 9. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. I beheld till the kingdoms on the earth were cast down, destroyed. And the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days is the Most High, having no end of days, no beginning of days. Go ahead. Whose garment was white as snow. He had a white, beautiful garment. In order to have a garment, you need a body to put a garment on. So God does have a body. Go ahead. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. And he got hair on his head and it's not sh long string stringy hair. It's like the pure wool. Go ahead. His, Is that it? His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels is burning fire. So now what I wanted out of that is that the kingdoms are going to be destroyed. These kingdoms that we know today as the United States of America, France, Germany, uh, the UK, they're all going to be cast down. Let's go back to Revelation 21. And one again. Revelation 21 and verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. When it says, and there was no more sea, here's a priest. Go to Isaiah 17, verse 12. Isaiah 17 and verse 12. What, there ain't going to be no water on the planet, brother? Oh, come on. Huh? Isaiah chapter 17 and verse 12. Woe to the multitude of many people, which make a noise like the noise of the seas. So these multitude of many people make a noise like the multitude of seas. Go ahead. And to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. So notice it compares the multitude of many people and which make a noise like the noise of seas and these many people a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. Going into nations. Nations going and rebelling against the Most High God. That's this new kingdom that's coming. Why? Because they're all going to be subdued. Go back to Revelation 21. Revelation 21 and verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now that right there, that right there, give me, uh, is it Job about their double? Job 11? Thank you. Give me that. Let me show you something about that verse. Because the thought is, like I said, thy kingdom come. People are always going to come out the sky. Uh, no, 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 no. That's not what it's talking about. I'm going to show you that. Job, I'm going to show you. Come on. Job chapter 11, verse 6. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. The secrets of wisdom is what we want. That they are double to that which is. To that which is written. The secrets of wisdom is double 
to that which is written. Many times we read scriptures and there are dual meanings behind it. I'm going to show you that. Go back to Revelation 21 and 2. Let's get in. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride. Prepared as what? A bride. Here's the key. This is the key right there. Prepared as a bride. Go ahead. Adorned for her husband. Now, this is one thing you got to understand. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. The Lord is not marrying a place. He's marrying a people. Let me show you that. Watch this. But first, before we get into the marriage, I'm going to show you New Jerusalem. Give me 2nd Ezra 9. 2nd Ezra. I'm going to show you the duality of this thing. Second address nine. Let's start at verse twenty-five. Second Esdras chapter nine, verse twenty-five. Mm -hmm. And pray unto the highest, the highest continually. This is the archangel Uriel speaking to Esdras. Ezra. Go ahead. Then will I come and talk with thee. So I went my way into the field which is called Adrath, like as he commanded me. And then I sat among the flowers and did eat of the herbs of the field, and the meat of the same satisfied me. After seven days I sat upon the grass, and my heart was vexed within me, like as before. And I opened my mouth and began to talk before the Most High. So now what I just want, all I want to show you there is that Ezra was fasting, and the Lord was about to show him many things. Now watch what he shows him. Jump to chapter 10 and verse 25. Second Ezra 10 and 25. And it came to pass, while I was talking with her, behold, her face upon a sudden shine exceedingly. So this was a woman. He was talking to a woman. All of a sudden, her face began to shine exceedingly. Go ahead. And her countenance glistened mm -hmm. so that I was afraid of her and must. What Mused. It, and, thank you. And muse what it might be. And behold, suddenly she made a great cry, very fearful. So this woman screamed. Now, when you read the entire chapter, this woman was crying, crying for her dead son. Ezra approached her and said, hey, why are you crying for your son? Don't you see what's happened to all our people? She says, listen, you don't understand. Let me explain to you what happened to my son. So now as he's talking to her, all of a sudden she begins to glow. And then she starts to scream. He's like, what the hell is going on? Read verse 26 again. And behold, suddenly she made a great cry, very fearful, so that the earth shook at the noise of the woman. You got to imagine this thing. The woman's going. The earth is shaking. He's like, what the hell is going on here? Go ahead. And I looked, and behold, the woman appeared unto me no more. The woman was gone. Go ahead. But there was a city building. And a large place showed itself from the foundation. So the woman he was talking to transformed into a city. Mm. And Ezra is like, what the hell am I seeing? Go ahead. Then was I afraid and cried with a loud voice and said, where is Uriel the angel who came unto me at the first? For he hath caused me to fall into many trances. And my end is turned into corruption and my prayer to rebuke. So now what happens, I'm just going to get to the point. Uriel comes and speaks to him. Jump down to verse 44. Uriel explains what happened with the woman. Verse 44. This woman whom thou sawest is Zion. And whereas she said unto thee, even she whom thou seest is a city builded. As a city builded. So now that gives us the thought, hmm, this woman is really a city, and vice versa. So when we read Revelation 21 about this great city coming from heaven, it's symbolic of the people first and foremost. Give me Isaiah 52 in verse 1. Isaiah chapter 52 in verse 1. Watch this. Awake! Awake! Put on thy strength, O Zion. He's telling us to wake up. Put on our strength. Go ahead, O Zion. Go ahead. Put on thy beautiful garments. Put on your beautiful garments. Go ahead. O Jerusalem, the holy city. You didn't notice nothing about that verse right there? How is a city going to put on garments? This city represents the people. Read the verse again. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. 
the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Meaning the other nations. So now, when we go back to Revelation 21, now that we got the thought together, this is why the Lord said you must read his word out, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little, line upon line, line upon line. Y'all know I'm in the school now. Something like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Back to Revelation 21 and verse 2 again. Revelation chapter 21 and 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's why it says prepared as a bride, as a bride adorned for her husband. Because this is the people. Watch this. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 3.14. Here's another precept. There's more, but I'm going to just give you a few. Jeremiah 3 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. Turn, O backsliding children. Turn, O backsliding children. Saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. For I am married unto you. Who? The Israelites. Was that it? And I will take you one of a city and two of a family. Meaning the elect. Everybody ain't coming on this trip. And I will bring you to Zion. And I will bring you to Zion. So he's married to the people. Okay. Let's go back to Revelation. Everybody got their thought now, right? All right, so we're back in Revelation 21. For That's for those of you that thinks the kingdom's going to come from the sky. Remember Christ said, give me that. Christ said the kingdom does not come with observation. And Luke, find that for me, somebody. I'm, some of you Christians, I know some of you got the Christian thoughts still here. You think you're going to be walking down the street one day and see the kingdom coming from the sky. That's not happening. That's not what it's talking about. You got it? Yes, sir. Where are we going? Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. Come on. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. You're not going to see it. It's not coming from the sky. He's telling you. Go ahead. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. It's coming from the east. No, it's coming from the west. It's coming from the south. No. But I said, that ain't what it's talking about. Go ahead. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. He said, you Israelites. You're the kingdom of God. You're the holy city. You're New Jerusalem. That's a, that was a hard thing for our people to grasp. Still hard. Still hard. Like, mm, what? Huh? I'm just Negro. I'm just Spick. <laughs> Back to Revelation 21. Revelation 21 and verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her so this is the people. This is the people coming down. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Mm. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. Now let me show you that this is what Moses said the same exact thing. Give me that what Moses said in Leviticus 26. We're going to read from verse 3. Leviticus 26. Let's start at verse 3. Moses said the same thing. So, so for you to think the Old Testament and New Testament are saying two completely different things, you're insane. You've been lobotomized, Christianized, bamboozled, hoodwinked. Yeah, you've been bird boxed. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and you shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. So Moses is letting us know when we were entering the promised land, if we keep God's commandments, the land will be full with blessings. We will eat to the full with all we want. Go ahead. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. So there'll be no evil beasts, and there'll be no war in your land. Come on. And ye shall chase your enemies, 
and they shall fall before you by the sword. And we're going to chase our enemies, and they're going to fall before us by the sword. Come on. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Now, you know what we got to have to do that? Power. Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. You need power to do that thing. Some you can't get the old raggedy woman off the block, struggling with her. I remember I had a case. I'm just going to deflate just for a second. We had a radio call. Old woman beat her husband. The husband was Chinese, Chinese. So my boss goes, he was all bloody. I guess she knew that. What's that called? Uh, Wen Chun. Wu Shu. Wen Chun. Wen Chun, that thing. Wen Chun. Well, she must have whooped him. So I'm sitting there, and he goes, the boy's going to lock her up. My partner goes to do it. Old German dude. He ain't no old German dude. Grabs her. She grabbed his wrist and threw him over. I said, I said, oh, shoot. Ah! Man, they was throwing. She, she was throwing him all across the bed, into the wall. The sergeant was laughing. I'm laughing. I couldn't stop. It, what he was saying, y'all stop beating me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was so damn funny. So after 20 minutes, when he finally got the cuffs on him. He cursed me and the sergeant out. No, if you help me, what's the old lady right? What are we going to do? <laughs> that thing was funny. What verse we had, Officer Leon? We had verse 9. Verse 9. Go ahead. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. You know why I like verse 9? Because remember in Acts 10, Christians love to go to Acts 10. Give me that precept where it says, the Lord is not a respect of person. That's for those that keep his law, those Israelites that keep his law. Because he has respect for those that keep his law. See, that's why I don't like the Bible. It contradicts itself. No, the white man contradicts the Bible. And because you believe everything he says, you're confused. You found it for me, Acts 10? Yes, sir. Acts 10 and verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of the truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. See, that God is God. They say God, G-A-W-D, God. God is no respecter of persons. Go ahead. But in every nation. But in every nation. He that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with well, him. Well, who was in every nation? Read the next verse. Tells you who was scattered in every nation. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel. Why? Because the children of Israel were in all nations. Why? Because they were scattered there from the time of slavery, from the time of the Assyrian and Babylonian captivity. Everybody got that idea? You got the thought now. All right, let's go back. That was just a little side note. Let's go back to Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26 and 9. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. Come on. And you shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. That's the crops. We have the crops that would last us from the old last season to the new season. Go ahead. And I will set my tabernacle among now you. Now that's what we were just reading in Revelation. He says, and I will set my tabernacle among who? You. You. Remember it said, my tabernacle shall be among men. The man he's talking about is you! Go ahead. And my soul shall not abhor you. You will not hate us. Go ahead. And I will walk among you, and will be your God, and ye shall be my people. And ye shall be my people. Let's go back to Revelation 21 and verse 3 once again. Revelation 21 and 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. That's the same thing Moses said. My tabernacle shall be among you. You who? You Israelites. Go ahead. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. This is the same thing Moses said. Go ahead. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. So everybody sees that's the same thing Moses had just prophesied to us thousands of years ago. Come on. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, mm. and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So for you not to want the kingdom, you're insane. With all the pain and sorrow we go through day by day, some of us week by week, month by month, year by year, decade, decade by decade, 
all the personal atrocities we go through, we should want verse 4 to come to fruition. Read it again. I just like the way it sounds. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. We want this thing. Go ahead. And there shall be no more death, mm -hmm. neither sorrow, neither sorrow, nor crying. There ain't going to be no more crying. Go ahead. Neither shall there be any more pain. Yeah, that foot that hurt you ain't going to be no more pain. That back that hurt you, you ain't going to have no back problems no more. That rheumatism and arthritis going to be gone in that day. Y'all yeah. <laughs> can get rid of them canes you got. Get your arm out the cast. You're going to be all right in that day. Good. For the former things are passed away. See, the former things goes back what we read in verse 1 about the, the, the I'm paraphrasing, the new heaven and new earth coming for the old was passed away. The former things involve the pain, the sickness, all that we just read right there. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 65. See what Isaiah prophesied about. Isaiah 65. We're going to read verse 17 now. Isaiah 65, verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. See that? That's what we just read in Revelation 21 and 1 down. Go ahead, read it again. I, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Mm -hmm. See that? Go ahead. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. The Lord going to change everything. Everything going to change. Go ahead. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem. Enjoy my people. He glad, we glad. Go ahead. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her. You ain't going to hear no more crying. Go ahead. Nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more offense in infant of days. There ain't going to be no more stillbirths. Ain't going to be no more miscarriages. Read that again. There shall be no more offense in infant of days, nor an old man that have not filled his days. And it's not going to be when an old man have not fulfilled his days. Go ahead. For the child shall die a hundred years old, mm -hmm. but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be a curse. Now this goes with the other nations and those of our people that's not part of that first, uh, what do we call it last time? Resurrection. Thank you so much. Read on. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. So those days of captivity ain't happening no more. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. Go ahead. And mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. And the elect shall long enjoy the work of his hands. Come on. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. Come on. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. Imagine that. Before we decide to call upon the Lord, he's already going to answer. That's some beauty right there. Go ahead. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Mm, go ahead. The wolf. You know how you're going to repeat things over and over now to the Lord? You, th you think you don't listen. He said, I hear you. I just don't want to answer you now. But on this day. He said, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Go ahead. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. That's how you know this is the kingdom. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. Didn't Moses say, he said, the Lord will remove all evil beasts out of the lamb. So he's going to change the whole nature here. Go ahead. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. And the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. Mm. And dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not Meaning hurt. The other nations going to be in a very low state. Go ahead. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, say of the Lord. See that? Let's go back to Revelation 21. And we are at verse 5. Revelation 21 and verse 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Right, for the things I'm saying are true and faithful, meaning they will surely come to pass. Go ahead. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Now, many times people often ask, Why does Christ say, I am Alpha and Omega? That's Greek for beginning and the end. Real quick, give me 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 45. 
First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 45. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 45. Now, if you catch it, you catch it. If you don't, you don't. Go ahead. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. <laughs> Go ahead, keep reading. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual. The but first Adam wasn't spiritual. Go ahead. But that which is natural. But he's natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. Then came the spiritual Adam. Go ahead. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Hmm, now he said something right there. Now give me Luke 3, the last verse. If you catch it, you catch it. You don't, you just lost. What do you mean by that? Get a clue. Get a clue. Stay in the spirit. Luke 3, 38. Luke 3, verse 38. Now I'm going to help you with this precept. If you catch it, you catch it. If you don't, you don't. Which was the... This is, this is the genealogy of... Mary. Now, let me look at it because Leon will say something and that's not what I want. Let me just look at it myself. Mercy, mercy. Now look at verse 23. That's what I want. Luke 3 and verse 23. Right. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed, the son of Joseph. The son of Joseph. Which was the son of Heli. Now, Joseph was not the son of Heli. Heli, Joseph was the son-in-law to Heli. So Luke chapter 3 gives the genealogy of Mary's family. Opposed to Matthew uh, chapter 1, we gives you Joseph's genealogy. Everybody with me so far? Yes, sir. Okay, let me say it once again. Matthew 1 gives you Joseph's genealogy to Christ. Luke chapter 3 gives you Mary's genealogy through her daddy, Heli. Now, jump down to verse 38 is what we wanted initially. Verse 38, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Boom. You catch it, you catch it, you don't, you don't. Anyway, let's move on now. Let's go right on back. <laughs> Let me look at 2 Ezra 3.21. 2 Ezra 3 and verse 20. And this is going to help you understand when it said the first Adam was natural. That's for the Corinthians precept. Let me just show you about Adam, which was the son of God. That's what it says about him. It's going to open up another door, but I'm, I'll touch on another class. We did. Second Ezra chapter 3 and verse 21. Why did Adam fall? Why did he listen to Eve? This is why. Go ahead. For the first Adam bearing a wicked heart. Why does it say the first? The first Adam. <laughs> Paul explained that. He said, the first Adam. Anyway, read it again. For the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome, and so be all they that are born of him. Okay, moving right along. Let's go back to Revelation 21. And we're at verse 7. No, read 6 again. Revelation 21 and 6. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. The fountain of the water of life. As you know, go to Ephesians 5, 26, please. You got these movies. So, oh, we're looking for the fountain. What is it? The fountain of youth. Listen, <laughs> they're getting out of here from the fountain of living waters. But this fountain ain't what they think it is. Read that. Ephesians 5 and uh, 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. It's the washing of water by the word. So the water represents the word of God. Back to Revelation 21, please. And he said unto me, Revelation 21, verse 6, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Mm -hmm. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. And he shall be my son. Now, verse 7, I want to pause at just a moment. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Real quick, give me 1 John 5, verse 45. He that overcometh will inherit all things. You have some Israelites that say they already overcame. And while you 
in the midst of poverty? Why are you on welfare? Why are you in the ghetto if you overcame? Why is the white man telling you to shut up and sit down? <laughs> that took a moment to sink in y'all. So we got it now. First John five, verse four and five. First John chapter five, verse four. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. When it says to be born of God, it means what whosoever is born again. Born again. To be born of God is to be born again, meaning changed. You've been converted. Read. And this. No, read it again. Oh. For, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Overcometh the world. The world. Now that term, when you read the book of Revelation, you read several other, um, give me the phrase. Oh, I'll use that word. Or metaphors. Several other metaphors, such as. The mark of the beast, you read about the image of the beast, the number of his name. John makes it more plain. He says the world. If you, it says he, whoever, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Very straightforward, very simple. Whereas Revelation, the apostle John, a revelator, goes into a little more metaphoric speech. Makes it a little more harder to understand. Go ahead. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, indeed, our faith. Go ahead. Who is he that overcometh the world? He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So if you believe that Christ is the Son of God, he says, don't worry, you have overcome the world. And when it says, give me the scripture, and I think it's uh, Sirach 32. Everybody says they believe. Is it 32? Everybody, I believe, I believe, I believe I can fly. Yeah, all right. Where are we going? Sirach chapter 32 and verse 24. Write that down. Sirach 32 verse 24. I hope that's the right verse of Selena. Yes, sir. Go ahead. He that believeth in the Lord. You are all right. Go ahead. Taketh heed to the commandment. He that believeth in the Lord takes heed to the commandment. So when you see men and women, women. Run up out of here. I ain't applying Matthew 18. To hell with Matthew 18. What is Matthew 18? I'm not doing it. They don't believe Jesus is the son of God. Mm. I, they can say they believe all day on Facebook, wherever they I believe. I, no, you don't. You don't believe nothing. Your actions have spoken for you. Soon as the conflict came, you ran. Hightailed it out of here. Go back. Uh, first John chapter oh, Revelation. Oh, Revelation. No, read first John five and five again. First John five and five. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. This that's, that's it. Go back to Revelation twenty one. Revelation twenty one and verse seven. Mm -hmm. Read it again. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Let's pause there. Give me Revelation 2 and 11. Let's give some examples. Because John was very uh, generic. Let's see what John the Revelator says in Revelation 2 verse 11. Revelation chapter 2 verse 11. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The churches are the Israelites scattered throughout Asia Minor. Go ahead. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Didn't we touch on that last week? He said, he that, <laughs> he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. That's why it said, uh, on, if you have part in the first resurrection, the second death has no power over you. So you ain't got to worry about that. Jump from there. Stay right there. Give me uh, chapter, I mean, verse 17. Verse 17. Revelation 2, verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, to him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna. That's their secret understanding. Go ahead. And will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written. And he's going to give all of us. If those of us that make it, I pray we all make it, the Lord's will. He's going to give us a new name. And when you hear it, you're going to know that's your name. Your spirit going to go, hey, wake up, that's you. Right. Your name from the beginning. 
No, your name ain't Yolanda. It ain't Raheem either. It ain't Julio. Read that again. Him that to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save he that receives it. He that receives that stone, you gonna know only you gonna know what your name truly is. That's some heavy stuff right there. Jump down to verse twenty six. Verse twenty six. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works. See that. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works. What is his works? Give me that in Second Ezra seven twenty four. Just to explain the works. Just want to explain the works. Second Ezra chapter seven and verse twenty four. But his law have they despised and denied his covenants, and his statutes have they not been faithful. And have not performed his works. You see what his works is? His works is explained there. But his law have they despised and denied his covenants. In his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. So his works refers to his law, his statutes, his covenant. Let's go back. Revelation 2 and 26. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. Unto when? Until the end. Till death do we part. It's not until you get sick and tired of it. It's until the end. Whichever comes first, either your death or Christ's return. Whichever comes first, that's the end. We must be doing this to the end. Everybody understand that? This is a lifelong journey here. Everybody understand that? Because it seems like some people don't understand. I've been doing this for he go, seven years, brother. Seven years, really. Seven years. Wow. Don't compare your chapter seven to our chapter 30, okay? Right. <laughs> that went over some of your heads, but <laughs> you're going to let's leave it right there. Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, for a dog. Dog years is long. Dog years. <laughs> yeah, Chase Cars. Read that again. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. See that? To him will I give power over the nations. Go ahead. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. We're going to break the nations. They, we're going to make them submit. Go ahead. Even as... I received my father. Christ said the same thing I received of my father. I'm going to give it to you. Let's show you that real quick. Real quick. Give me Psalms 2, I believe it is. Psalms chapter 2, where it says, uh, but inherit the nations. I'm not looking at it. But I know it says something like that. Ask of me and I will give you the nations. Psalms 2, 7 to 9. Yeah. Psalms chapter 2 and verse 7. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This is about Christ. Mm -hmm. This day have I begotten thee. This day have I begotten thee. Got it? Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance. Now that's heavy. He said, ask me, and I will give you all the nations for an inheritance. Now watch this. Watch what I'm about to say right here. Satan is the devil. The Bible speaks of. We all know that. But he said something to Christ in Matthew 4. He said, it said he showed him. All the kingdoms of the world and the glory. He says, and I'll give you all this if you bow down and worship me. Christ said, get behind me, Satan. So now watch what the Father says to Christ. Read that again. Ask of me. Ask of me. And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. I'll give you the nations and the glory therein. Go ahead. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. See that? He says to Christ, you shall break the nations with a rod of iron. Go ahead. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. You will destroy these nations like a potter's vessel. Was that it? Yes, sir. That's the same thing that Christ says to us here in Revelation chapter 2. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Revelation 2 and 26, 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter. Shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father? See that even Christ says, even as I received of my father, you men gonna get the same thing. That's why another scripture says, 
we are joint heirs with Christ. Who knows what that is? It's Romans somewhere. Romans 8, 16. Give me that. Thank you. We are joint heirs. <coughs> Romans 8. Just look somewhere in there. I know it's in there. Yes, sir. Romans 8 and verse 17. And if children, then heirs. And if children, then heirs. Go ahead. Heirs of God. Heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. And joint heirs with Christ. Now, you might think this leaves out the woman, but it doesn't. Watch this. First Peter 3, 7. Does joint heirs only mean the men? Mm, let's see. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with them according to the knowledge of God, the law. Go ahead. Giving honor unto the wife mm -hmm. as unto the weaker vessel. Yeah, we know she she got half a clue, but bear with her. <laughs> Go ahead. And as being heirs together. And as being what? Heirs together. Being heirs together. Go ahead. Of the grace of life. Of the grace of life. That your prayers be not hindered. That your prayers be not hindered. So we got to deal with them. Now that's for another class. I was about to go stage left, but I'm going to just pause it there and go back to Revelation 21. <laughs> Revelation, no, no, I want Revelation 3 verse 5. I still want to deal with he that overcometh. Revelation 3 verse 5. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Go ahead. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. See that? And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Go ahead. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Now that's the honor right there for Christ to confess your name before the father and the angels. That's why another scripture says, he that is ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you before my father and the angels. That's a heavy thing right there. Real quick, jump down to verse 12. Same chapter. Revelation 3 and 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. To be a pillar means a leader. To be a pillar means to be a leader. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Go ahead. And he shall go no more out. And he shall go no more. I mean, out where? Into captivity. That ain't happening no more. Go ahead. And I will write upon him the name of my God. I'm going to give you the name of my God. Go ahead. And the name of the city of my God, mm -hmm. which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. That's how beautiful it's going to look. Go ahead. And I will write upon him my new name. Christ said, I got a new name too, and I'm going to give you that new name. So what you arguing for? Yahshua. Yahweh Shai. He said, I got a new name. I'm going to give it to you. Watch this. Jump down to verse 21. It's Yahushua. It's Yahshua. One dude said, no, you better say Emmanuel. Another dude, what is it? I, we said you, you're shy or you're Ahaya Ashai. You got to say that or aren't you damned? Wow. With all these names, Christ already, he just said, I got a new name that I'm going to give you. So what y'all fighting for? You know, y'all talking about the same. Yeah, I know y'all talking about me. That's what the Lord's saying. That's what you fight down there on earth fighting for. Read that. Revelation 3.21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Now that's heaven. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Go ahead. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Now, just to try, I'm trying, when you try to think about that thing, no, you ain't going to be sitting on equal level with Christ. It's going to be, it's going to be order. The Lord's about order. Ain't no, we all are saying, mm -mm, that's Negro thought thinking right there. Only black people think like that, except when you get around white folks, then you don't think like that no more. Now you know your place. Yeah, as a boss. Yeah, as a. But when we get around each other, we all say we're all equal. Yeah, right. From there, from there, go back to Revelation chapter 21. We're at verse 8. Revelation 21 and verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars 
shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, I want to go through that verse. It says, but the fearful, the fearful shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Give me Sirach 2 and 12. The fearful. The fearful. Sirach 2 and 12. In the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus chapter 2, verse 12. Woe be to fearful hearts. Woe be to fearful hearts. Go ahead. And faint hands. Faint hands. And the sinner that goeth two ways. The sinner that goeth two ways. You're double-minded. You got the Bible in your hand, but you won't do nothing what it says. So, from there, the next word that the Bible used after fearful, what was the second word after that? But the fearful and unbelieving. Unbelieving. Titus 1.15. Unbelieving. We just read in uh, Sirach 32 that if you believe, you'll keep the commandments, right? Look what Titus says here. Titus chapter 1 and verse uh, 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. Unto the pure, all, meaning whatever the Bible says, they believe it. We're going to accept it. We're going to do it. Go ahead. But unto them that are defiled. But unto them which are defiled. Good. And unbelieving, unbelieving is nothing pure. I got a question this here. See, I got a, I got a problem with this chapter, this verse. No, I don't accept this. I don't accept it. This is what you hear. Was that it? No, sir. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. That's why we ain't got time for people to always question. And the questions ain't no regular questions. It's questions of doubt. Questions of non-belief. How was the, uh, uh, the whale or the, the fish swallow Jonah? That don't make no scientific sense, my brother. Then go to hell. That's the only answer you could give them. <laughs> Jump into the lake of fire with you. Now they're going to do a video. He's trying to kill people. Oh, God. Yeah. The mic. Romans 14 and 1. Romans 14 and 1. Him that is weak in the faith, receive you. Some brothers uh, have weaker faith than others. So you deal with them at first. Go ahead, but watch this. But not to doubtful disputations. That part. But not to doubtful disputations. Doubtful arguments. I don't believe that. I don't see how that's possible. I got swallowed by a whale. Okay, it is what it is. You don't see it. You don't see it. But it says don't receive them to doubtful. You can receive them if they have latent faith. But don't. But there's a limit to that. To doubtful disputations, don't receive them. Right. The dis disputation means they want to argue with you. They show them the door. You can go. That's all you can say. So what was the next word, Officer Liam? After fa fearful, unbelieving. These are these are synonyms. These are words for people. Every, now, most people, some of the people online may fall into some of these categories. You might be fearful, you're going into the lake of fire. Unbelieving, you're going into the lake of fire. And, and what's the third word? And the abominable. And the abominable. Let's go there to Leviticus 18. Now we're going to hit something heavy here. Leviticus 18. Let's start at verse 30, then we're going to jump up. Leviticus 18 and verse 30. Therefore, shall ye keep mine ordinances that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs. Don't keep any one of these abominable customs. Go ahead. Which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. Let's read some of the abominable customs that some of us up in here, up in here, might, might. Or maybe be involved, involved with. It's online too. I'm talking to you, brothers and sisters online too. Jump up. And we're going to read through this quick, Officer Leon. Yes, sir. Let's jump to verse 7. We're going to go down quick. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shall thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. So to have sex with your mom is abominable. Read on. The nakedness of thy father's wife shall thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. To have sex with your stepmother is abominable. Go ahead. The nakedness of thy sister 
the daughter of thy father or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad. Even there, nakedness thou shalt not uncover. To have sex with your sister is abominable. Read. The nakedness of thy son's daughter. Your son's daughter is your what? Your grandchild, right? Is that what it is? Y'all help me out here. Don't get me saying nothing simple. Granddaughter. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, your grandchild. Read it again. The nakedness of thy son's daughter or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. For theirs is thine own nakedness. Now, we know some of y'all up in here. Well, not, not in here. But in everybody's family. I shouldn't say everybody. You all got that nasty granddaddy. Some of you know that granddaddy. You don't want your kids to stay. No. You, I want to stay at granddaddy's. No, you don't. No, no, no. He always rocking me on his lap. I know that, that you ain't going to granddaddy's house. We don't. The naked. The the nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter. That's your stepsister. Go ahead. Begotten of thy father, she is thy sister. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Mm, go Thou ahead. Thou shalt not uncover thy nakedness of thy father's sister. She is thy father's near kinswoman. We call that an aunt today. Go ahead. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. That's your aunt too. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt, your uncle. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. That's which is she, she is, is thine aunt. That's the aunt. Go ahead. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughters-in-law. She is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. So don't have sex with your daughter-in-law. Go ahead. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. That's your sister-in-law. Go ahead. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter, to uncover her nakedness. For they are her near kinswoman. It is wickedness. You ever meet these brothers? Some of you sitting up in here, I know. You see, you are, you going out with the mama. The mama, good, look good. Right. But then you see the daughter, and you go, wow. I should have just waited a little longer. I could have had her. But then what do you do? You stop dealing with mommy and the daughter, both. The Bible says that is abominable. That's the family. You don't do that. Now, if you feel if you cut in here good, you need to be cut. Stop it. Come on. Damn. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. And we can't do menage de trois either. I know some of you sucking your teeth. You can't do it. Having two women, a woman beside the other, that's called a menage de trois. Is that how it's called? A threesome. You can't do that. Some of y'all smiling. We're not supposed to do that. Hey! No, I'm going to be quiet on that thing. I had a story, but I'm not going to tell that story. Bring it up. It's a true story. See, it is a true story, but I can, some of y'all might not get yeah, what I'm going to say about this thing. Yeah! Let me say, Satan is Satan is the devil of ice. <laughs> I can't tell a story. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Also, not, also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. Oh, 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 oh. Y'all know when you be getting hard up and horny. And the woman says, I'm on my sixth day, and you just can't wait. And you go in to, but, and then here you go, but the, the blood stopped on day three. That don't mean nothing. You're supposed to wait how long? Seven days. Seven days. Don't run the red light. <laughs> and you women be giving into that thing. You women, it feel good. It feels better. We don't need no lube. You nasty as hell. Blood going every what the hell is this? That's disgusting. Ew. Get a towel, babe. Get a towel. The Bible says that's abominable. Don't do it. Don't do it. No, no, no. What verse we at? Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself. That's with her. adultery. That also is abominable. Go ahead. 
And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of, the, of thy God, I am the Lord. Now hear the women. Ain't nobody doing that. It says thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. What were they doing with their children? Killing them. How do, what do we call that new word today? Abortion. abortion. That's what it's taught. Do not abort your babies. That is abominable. Everybody got quiet. It's got quiet. It's, it's like you can hear a pin drop now. Wow, a lot of abominable people up in here. Verse 22. Verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Oh, 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 oh. Now let me tell you, brother, something about that one. I got a story. Do I want to tell that story? It's a safe story. I can tell that one. Okay, the other one's not safe. But this one is safe. You brothers, listen, let me tell you something about the Bible says marriage is honorable, you know, and a bed under fault. No, no, not that scripture. One in Corinthians says, to avoid fornication, let every man have his what? Own wife. And let every woman have a what? Own husband. But let me say this about that verse. That's not an all in all verse. Meaning it is not the, what is the word? It is not the answer, the all, the cure. overall answer. The end of, or the end all. So what I mean by that? If you, or you know you are still battling with that same sex demon. And you know you it's hard to overcome. Don't get married yet. Wait. 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 There's a movie I saw called, is it Green House? Not Green. Something green on Netflix. Green. Green Leaf. Green Leaf. I think it was season one. Green Leaf. His wife, you ain't the wife, but I'm just making believe. The wife is sitting there talking to him, and he is on, uh, 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 uh what is it called? No, it was a um, chat. It was a male. Oh, it's called Tinder? Oh, he looked at it. I don't know. They said it's not Tinder. They saw the thing. I don't know what it was, but he was looking at it while it was talking to him. And he's like, yeah, babe, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, while well, she looking at the soap, he looking at that thing. So you know, you know, you better go for counseling or don't get married yet. Just wait, wait. You got to get that demon out. Get that demon out. Now, I mean, marriage helps, but it's not the end all. You got to pray and fast also. There's more to go into that. Uh, verse, what verse we at now? Verse 23. Verse Leviticus 18, verse 23. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Now, that's bestiality. What they call That's a new word they got for it. Zoo. They can say, are you zoo? It's nasty. Esau's the devil. A zoophiliac. Uh, a what? Zoo, zoo, zoophilia. Zoophilia. Messing with the dog. And you want to watch these single sisters, not these single sisters here. I'll mostly see white women do it. They get the Great Dane. You ever see them Great Dane dogs? And very, very overprotective. Don't come near her. Don't, don't touch her. And it's not, a, it's not like a, 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 no, you did. It's not like, the, you know the dog, a dog will protect you. But this dog is just something, a spirit, like, that's my woman. You don't touch her. Don't come near her. Or some of the women buy the little dog and they get the peanut butter. You ever see them at that school? Okay. Anyway. Then you get the women. Remember the woman on the news that had the orangutan? The big monkey. And the friend came over, and the monkey looked at her and grabbed the jaw and ripped it off her face. Ripped the head, ears off her face. The monkey said, that's my woman. You don't touch her. It's all in the news. She was messing with the orangutan. Nasty. As hell. That's abominable. Now, I know some of you probably, everybody here make like, I don't mess with no animals. But if you, how many of y'all come from the islands? Look, nobody from the islands today. Nobody from the islands. You're not from the islands either. No, nobody from the islands. Not Puerto today, Rico. you're not from the Puerto islands. Rico. Not today. I, I want to make it very clear, Puerto Rico is a commonwealth of the United States. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> no, we're in America today. We're no island today. We're in America today. That's Simeon. But hey, Simeon, you see Zephyr all quiet over there. He ain't saying nothing. He know where hey, it is. Where is that at? A, there's a YouTube video where they break in the board. They 
get the boy's virginity by messing with a donkey. Colombia, Colombia. They say have sex with a donkey. Northern Kingdom, yeah, yeah. Now you're going to join Northern Kingdom, right? <laughs> they got it from Benjamin. Just nasty, nasty stuff. Abominable. God says this is abominable. So where are we at now? <laughs> that was verse 23, Bishop. We're, we're in where? That was in Leviticus 18, verse in American. 23. You're an American. Okay, so jump down to verse 30 now. Verse 30. Therefore shall you keep mine ordinances that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs. Why? Remember we just read in Revelation 21, verse 8. It said, but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable shall have their place in the lake of fire. What was the next word after uh, abominable, Officer Liam, in Revelation 21 and 8? Revelation 21 and 8. And murderers. Murderers. First John 3, 15. Because we love to say we don't murder. The group that ran up out of here said they don't murder. Really? I hope they're watching now. The double mind is taking notes right now in the class. Okay. Revelation 3.15. This is goes for you, brothers and sisters. Huh? First John, I'm sorry. First John 3.15. First John 3 and 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. I don't know about you, but if I record any of you and hold it for three to two to three years and wait to embarrass you on YouTube, what is that called? Hatred. Say it again. What is it? Hatred. That is hatred. That is hatred. You will have your part as a murderer in a lake of fire. Read verse First John again. First John three fifteen. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. What'd you say, Diggy? What's up? Two day of atonements have already gone by. So that's called hatred. So you mean I don't hate anybody? That's a lie, you little weasel. That's a lie. You're filled with hate, and the whole crew that ran up here behind you filled with hatred. You all gonna have your part in the lake of fire. You can mark down the timestamp now. I said it. Yes, because I'm reading what the Bible. Can you uh? Pool water might cool it off. The pissy pool water cleared it? Okay. All righty then. So what was the next word after murderers, Officer Leon? Whoremongers. Oh, 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 oh. Can we look up that word whoremonger? And get me Sirach 2317. And you know, some brothers... Let me say, some brothers in here, or online, I'll say it like this, uh, or what they call, or what the world calls pretty boys. They can just walk down the street and get any woman. There's one brother, I ain't going to point him out in here. He had these dreads. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He just walked down the street, and women be just throwing their stuff at him. And all the, all the ugly brothers were like, what the hell is this? How come I can't get a woman? <laughs> Look at this, this. Homonger. Someone who consorts with whores, a lecher, a panda. No, there's something else. Go up. There's more. To go up. Uh, you got, yeah, you got to find a better definition. Come on. Y'all got to help me out here. Come on. you help me. Come on. Just pick one, bro. Why you got a big NG? Wow. Go ahead. Go down. Okay, I like, this is all right. Whoremonger. A person who has dealings with prostitutes. Now, that's not the part we want. We want this part next. A, especially a sexually promiscuous man. Especially a sexually promiscuous. What did Benjamin call him? Coxman. I'm a coxman man. I have babies everywhere. Woman, every woman will take care of one. You, you are a whoremonger. That's what the Bible says. This is a sin. Now, all you good-looking brothers, you know you fall under this. Now, you ugly brothers, you'll be on back page. That falls under something else. <laughs> I, we can't hear you. Cut it on. Bishops, they don't say coxman no What do they more. call it now? They say gallus. What? Gallus, gallus. Gallus. And nobody never heard, nobody used that no more. Co coxman. That's like in I'm the I'm from back in the day, bro. Come on. <laughs> They say Gallus. How do you I don't how do you spell Gallus? How do you spell that? Gal Gal Gallus. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin. 
Dallas, Dallas, Dallas. But that is, uh, so yeah, that falls under hormone. So read the scripture, read Sirach 23 and 17. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus chapter 23 and verse 17. Uh -huh. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. See that? All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He don't care what she look like. A whoremonger has no particular taste in women. What, whatever floats, whatever comes by that moment, he will sleep with it. It's about him. It's about him uh, getting his rocks off. Can I say that? That's easy. That's all he wants. Yeah, sexual fulfillment. That's it for the moment. And they all, and the, a whoremonger can spot a simple woman. Give me that in Timothy 3 and 5. You know what I want. A whoremonger is expert at finding a stupid woman. And don't let the whoremonger be good looking. Oh, that stupid woman's finished. See, she got some hope if, she, if he's ugly. And he think he got game. And she got, no, he ain't getting none of this. Give me that. Second, is that what I want? Yes, sir. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Why? For of this sort are they which creep into houses. They creep into houses. Go ahead. And lead captive silly women laden with sins. They, ca they lead captive silly women, stupid women who are filled with sin. Led away with diverse lusts. Led away with diverse lusts. Led away with diverse lusts. Now, something just came back to my mind, back to my mind. Where was it in Leviticus 18, somebody help me out here, that said, don't have sex with your uh, brother's daughter? Where was that? Where was that? Somebody help me. It, it might not have used those words. Your daughter, your brother's daughter. No, that says, 16 says your brother's wife. Let me see. I want your brother's child. Where is that at? Or your sister's child. Thou should not come naked over. That's the whole family. Somebody help me out here. I forgot something that just popped in my head. If y'all find it, let me know. Y'all got to help me out here. I'm slow. Having sex with your brother or sister's son or daughter. Or daughter. Son or daughter. 17, thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter. And that's okay. 10, the nakedness of thy, that's it, 10, thank you. No, that's the grandchild, ain't it? The nakedness of thy son's daughter. No, I want. Anyway, I'll, use this. I'll just use this. I just want to say something about verse 17. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. That's my, thou shalt not approach, that's his aunt, of thy daughter-in-law. Okay, anyway, I'll use 17, basically. But anyway, last week, I'm not going to call no names. One of you came and said your brother had sex with your daughter. And the response what do y'all think my response was? Who can raise a hand and ask me, who can tell me what I asked him or her? What should be the first thing you, when somebody says that to you, there should be one common question everybody here asks at the same damn time. Let me hear right over here. Shalom, Bishop. Shalom. S Soldier Matthias. Did you call 911? Thank you. Did you call the cops? Don't come up and see, y'all be getting on my nerves with this stuff. You know why? They, when y'all come here to tell us, that's so later on they say, I told them, and to implicate us in some BS. And, and so that, did you call the, if you did not call the police, don't tell us. That's, that's beyond our, what's the word? Our jurisdiction. Yeah, right, that's beyond our jurisdiction. When you get to rape, murder, uh, 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 child molestation, some of these things y'all should have common sense. You go to the damn white man. That's when you go to the white man. Then you go to him. That's the law of the land. Because now if we get involved, let's say we take matters into our own hand and we beat the hell out of somebody or hurt them back. What's going to happen to us? Then we go to jail. There's an old expression. I'm just saying if you're going to do something, make sure nobody else knows. 
Because if you give one person no, that means everybody else is going to know. I'll just leave that there, and let's go back to where we was at. Where were we, over, Liam? Uh, we was in uh, Revelation 21, the next one. After oh, what was the next one? We was on whoremongers. Okay, we finished with whoremongers. What was the next word in verse 8? Revelation 21 and 8. And sorcerers. Sorcerers. And the next word? And idolaters. Now, sorcerers. Sorcery, sorcery, sorcery. Levi. And voodoo. You men and women from some of the islands, I won't say all of them, but that, that practice and delve. Now, this is how you know. Watch some of them. Because everybody say they don't practice. If you go to a brother or sister's house and there's a coconut under the bed. <laughs> sorcery. If you go to a brother or sister's house and there's a pile of salt in the corner with a glass of wine, sorcery. Wow. If you see the newspaper opened up to the horoscope, sorcery. Right. If you see bones around the neck, chicken bones, sorcery. sorcery. All that sorcery. You see that in Haiti and Jamaica too. Trinidad, you be seeing this stuff. What? But we've been there. We've seen it. What the hell is this? Yeah, Dominican you gotta start Republic, kicking through things. Dominican Republic know for that too. Dominican Republic. Yeah, that little corner. The little corner. Yeah, yeah the that, bodegas. Yes. Now, many of you in here will say, many of you in here will say, I don't practice sorcery and I don't practice idolatry. Give me first Samuel 15, 23. If your mother is buying water from pastor, whatever. A bottle of water for healing. That's sorcery. If she's getting the prayer cloth from the pastor to heal her cancer, sorcery. I'm going to tell you all straight, it's all sorcery. Read first, that. First Samuel. See, everybody got quiet with that one because you know your mom is in the sorcery. Read first, that. First Samuel 15, verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion. You don't want to apply Matthew 18? <laughs> you don't want to apply with your brother, your sister. Sorcery. You are rebellious. Read it again. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Uh -huh. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And you stubborn to do what God says? That's idolatry. It's as if you worship Buddha. You might as well go worship Shango or Eligua. Go! Okay. From there. So sorcery. Idolatry. Give me Colossians 3 and 5. I'm going to touch on this idolatry. Just a few more minutes. Colossians 3 and 5. I'm not, I'm not an idolater, brother. Mm-hmm. Okay. Watch this. Men and women, watch. Colossians 3 and 5. Mortify, mortify therefore, your members. So mortify means to deaden. Deaden, therefore, your members. Which are upon the earth. Let's see what he wants us to deaden within us. Go ahead. Fornication. Fornication. A sexual immorality. Go ahead. That's Leviticus 18 that we just read. Go ahead. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. That's Leviticus 15. Go ahead. In, inordinate affection. Inordinate. That goes back to Leviticus 18 too. Evil concupiscence. Right. Messing with your brother's daughter. Right. Go ahead. Read that again. Apart. Inordinate affection. Uh -huh. Evil concupiscence. Evil, concu evil thoughts. Go ahead. And covetousness. And this part I want it. And covetousness. Which is idolatry. Which is idolatry. If you have a covetous spirit, Paul says here through the spirit of Christ, you are an idolater. What does it mean by that? Watch what he means. Let me help you out here. First Timothy 6 and 10. For you idolaters, you covetous idolaters. What does it mean? Because some of you go, I don't worship Buddha. I don't worship Eligua. I don't worship the white Jesus no more. But let's get a little bit more about coverage. Let me tell you something. That whole crew that ran up out of here, idolatry, idolatry. This is going to explain it right here. First Timothy 6 and 10. For the love of money. For the love of money. Is the root of all evil. Is the root of all evil. If you look at them videos, my business, my money, my business, my money. They destroyed my business. They destroyed my money. The whole scheme. What's the word? Scheme. Was money. It's read it again. For the love of money. For the love of money. It don't say money. It says the love of it. For the love of money, what? Is the root of all evil. Is the root of all. Them videos that all popped on YouTube, that's the root of it. The love of money is the root of all evil. Go ahead. Which while some coveted. You after, heard that word? Which while some 
coveted after. Then we just read in Colossians, covetousness, which is idolatry. I Meaning that's what they worship. That's what they worship. Money is their God. Read that again. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. They have erred. Did not we witness this? These people erred from the faith. We are witnesses to what has occurred with brothers or former brothers, former sisters who have erred from the faith for the love of money. Bishop, an example of err from the faith is Matthew 18. Mm -hmm. The objective of Matthew 18 is to win your brother back. If you come to him with the suspicion before it even begins on evil, you're not there to win him at all. You're there trying to set him up for the purpose of filling your particular lust. Exactly. Your desire. Yep. Was that it, Officer Leon? They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And pierced themselves through. It's not we piercing them through. It's the Bible says they pierced themselves through with what? With many sorrows. With many sorrows. Do you know some of them are still, they, some of them, one of them called you yesterday. Text you yesterday, text Deacon Abiel. What, what y'all still doing? Why are you teaching the Bible? Why don't you stop? They hate the scripture, but then they'll do a video on Facebook. Hey, shalom, shalom. Let's go over some scriptures. Y'all be stupid as hell listening to these damn demons. These evil men and women. And some of the sisters who I thought were some of the nicest sisters saying the most evil things. I'm like, why? This is their sister? The last time I spoke to her, I said, how was your baby? How's the baby? Do everybody good? Your mama's good? My mom in the hospital? Good. All praises. Now, oh, I hate you. You the devil. Y'all all evil. Die, die, die. Now they're going to edit that part and say, see, he wants us to die. No, that's what y'all said about us. <laughs> Let's go back. First Timothy 6. No, I want First Timothy 6 and 10. Once again, I want this to marinate. And this is why now, this is why now, I want to speed the verse, speed the verse. First Timothy 6 and verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So now I'm, I'm saying this about you. I told you that Black Wall Street stuff. I'm a, I'm a, I, was, I was a big proponent for Black Wall Street. I love that thing. But it's really not Black Wall Street. It's really the Black Flea Market. That's what I'm going to call it from now, Black Flea Market. It's okay. It's okay. Now, I'm all for y'all having, everyone having businesses. That's fine. That's good. But now when you push it through, if your business cannot succeed in the world, it's not really a business. It's a hustle. If your business can only thrive in IUIC, it's a hustle. That's what it is. It's a business if your business does, is doing okay out in the world because it, it, it will keep always generating. In here is very limited, very, very limited. Understand that. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So if your business is just in IUIC, it's a hustle. It's not a business. So if your feelings are hurt, your feelings are hurt. Yeah, brother, a good hustle. <laughs> good luck with your hustle, and brother. Hustling, good luck. And hustling, hustling. <laughs> and this is how you know the difference between <laughs> if, your, if your business is for the, see, like we have OR, right? We got OR. That's for the body. Oh, it's for the body, right? Somebody falling hard times, we help them. We also use it to travel. Okay. But now let's say in your business, how does their business, who does their business benefit? Them. So that's your hustle. That's for you to make ends meet. That's for you. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So there's a difference. Yeah, yeah Bishop, nobody trying to stop with the hustle. Yeah, Remember, trying to stop brothers the hustle. thinking that they want in a top business. Then when demons fall upon them, you know I mean, when I, I see, say, yo, don't deal with that spirit no more. Whether they get upset. They get and, right. And if y'all coming with a business idea, it better be for the betterment of the body. If your business idea is for your pocket, don't bring it to us. Do not bring it to us. That's, that, that's the same crap that ran up out of here. They want all IUIC to do their business. No, we ain't running that no more. That's a, that's a hustle. That's a game. The, the business dealings in Israel is conditional. It's conditional upon the keeping the laws of the Most High. Once you start breaking the laws of the Most High, the business is over. So you don't get to say, y'all destroyed my business. You destroyed your relationship with the nation of Israel. So why in the world should any business continue after that? There you go. The brotherhood and the unity and all that is gone. Why the hell am I going to deal with you in business? You're out of your damn mind. <laughs> Hustling, stopping right there. There you go. Where we at, Officer Leon? 
Revelation uh, 21 and verse 8, there was one more word. And That's all be cast into the lake of fire. What's the other word? And all liars. And all liars. Now, talk about lying. I don't know about you. But if you record somebody with a video and the cup, I saw the video last night. And the cup from point A to point B, the cup pops over here. What is that called? That's editing. They chopped the video up to make you sound like you saying something. Well, that's why is the cop, cop doing this all through the thing? It's ridiculous. Like, yo, he got he got telekinesis. He can make that cup move around. The cup, the cup move, but the words seem smooth. Yeah, yeah. the words were smooth. smooth going on here. Video. The words ain't skip the beat, but the cup is dancing all over the screen. <laughs> uh, Bishop, Bishop, uh, when you see that cops moving, that's his. That's the spirit he had. That spirit of hustle. That's exactly. how he used to. Yeah, exactly. That man, that hustling. So all liars. So them people that did them videos, two and three parts, all of them are liars. Get Sirach 7, verse 12 and 13. And he got a little, little effeminate boy. Through the authenticity of honesty, I want to record you. Get the hell away from me! Oh, I can't stand that stuff. Yeah, spiritually still, it's gone. Spirit has left the building. Pardon me, sir, but for the authenticity of Smooth honesty, words. <laughs> may I have some gray poupon? Get the hell out of here. Get the pinky out. <laughs> Where are we going? Officer Leon, where are we going? I didn't hear the... I didn't, oh. Okay. Sirach 7, verse 12 and 13. Sirach chapter 7, verse 12. Devise not a lie against thy brother. Devise. What? Can we look at this word devise? What does devise mean? I'm showing you that whole, all them videos that some of y'all believed and ran up. Devised. Devised. D-E-V-I-S-E. Come on, come on, y'all. Yes. Look, first one, Divide. plan or invent. Read that over Liam. Plan or invent a complex procedure, system, or mechanism. Video editing. Go ahead. By, by careful thought. By ca They sat down and said, I got videos from three and two years ago. Let's read the next. Let's read the synonym. Synonym. Conceive. Think up. Come up with, dream up, draw up, work out, form, Thank formulate, you. concoct, concoct, design, frame, invent, coin, originate, compose, construct, fabricate, create. Fabricate. That's the word there, fabricate. 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 Create, produce. Oh. It is hot over here. Somebody got the heat on. Get the heat on. Yeah. Fabricate. Got heat under this thing. I'm burning up. I ain't sweating. Yeah, that's right. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Mm -hmm. Dude, why do I feel heat down there? Somebody said lake of fire. <laughs> no. Fabricate, fabricate, fabricate. Invent or concoct something Watch typically concoct. with deceitful intent. With deceitful intent. That's what divide goes back to device. With typically with deceitful intent. You can go back. Deceitful. So all of them that left said, we love the Lord. They're a bunch of liars. And they divide. Can we read the scripture? What scripture? Uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 7 and verse 12. Devise not a lie. Devise not a lie. Don't fabricate a lie. Don't make up a lie. Through complex procedure, system, or mechanism. Video editing. Don't try to record people on the phone. Calling them up. I just want to record. Then you chop up the conversation. Now everybody, oh, you're evil, brother. Shut the hell up. Come on, where we at, Officer Leo? Devise not a lie against thy brother, neither do the like to thy friend. Ooh, devise not a lie against thy brother, neither do the like to thy friend. These are people we knew for years. Paid their rent for years, and we got receipts, Nooka. We got receipts, so don't dare lie and say we didn't. I could go into that, but I won't. See, I'm not evil like they are. I'm not, I ain't going to do that. Read on. Use not. No, that was it. Okay. That was it. What? 
Uh, 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 go ahead. Get the next verse. for the next Verse 13. Use not to make any manner of lie. Yeah, including editing. Don't make any manner of lie. Go ahead. For the custom thereof is not good. It's not good. And that's a custom. It's, be, it's, it's a, it's a um, habit now. It's constant. That's not, it wasn't just one time. It was multiple times. So they are accustomed, a habit, accustomed to lying. Don't do that. Now let's go back to Revelation 21. I almost forgot where he was at. Revelation 20. Well, that verse was good. Verse 8. Verse 8 again. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. You know what that means in essence? They hate when Asaph says it, but I got to say it. You're going to die! That's what the Bible is saying. You're going to die! They go, oh, you, you're wishing, we're not wishing death for nobody. We're telling you what the scripture says. That's what the problem is. They don't want to be told. They want it to be in the Bible and act like they don't see it. But when you say it, then you can't run from it. When they hear it, then they can't run from it. Come the mic, because we can't hear you at all. Fix his mic. You know, you know the scripture says the wages of sin is debt, right? Yes. That's what the Bible says. The wages of sin is debt. That's Romans 6, 23. Right. And the debt we're talking about here, everybody got to die sometimes. So that's not the debt they're talking about. The debt they're talking about is what the bishop just read right here. You understand? The lake of fire. You understand? That's the debt that is talking about. Watch this. Get Proverbs 8. I think it's verse 36. I don't have it written down. All they that hate me about Christ. It's the last verse. Proverbs 8, the last yes, verse. Sir. Proverbs 8 and verse 36. But he that sinneth against me. Wrong. He that sinneth against me, against the Lord. Wrongeth his own soul. You wrong your own soul. Go ahead. All they that hate me love death. You know what the, that's not us wishing death on anybody. The Bible says, the Bible says, if you hate the Lord, you love death. So that group that ran up out of here, they fit that verse. I'm going to tell you all straight. Yes, go ahead. Real quick. Wisdom of Psalm 1. Uh, 12, 13. And jump down to 16. That's it. Wisdom of Psalm 1, verse 12. The book of wisdom of Solomon, the Apocrypha, chapter 1 and verse 12. Seek not death in the error of your life, mm -hmm. and pull not upon yourself destruction with the work of your own You of bring your death to yourself. That's the Bible saying. You're getting yourself with the death. You're not saying it. You, you're, you're, doing, you're causing it. Next verse. For God made not death. Go ahead. Neither hath he pleasure in the destruction of the living. Jump to verse 16. But ungodly men with their works and words. Stop. For ungodly men with their actions and their words. Murmurings, all that. We read, uh, read that earlier in verse 12, 11. Go ahead. Called it to them. You call death to you. Bring death to yourselves. Go ahead. For when they thought to have it in their... Have it their friend. You thought it, you thought that that was righteousness, even though it was death. Go ahead. They consumed to naught and made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it. Because they are worthy of dying based upon your words and your works. Yeah, that's why you see a lot of brothers when that uh, the death begin when you see them John three sixteen become a church scripture now. Baptism become water baptism. You understand? Uh, 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 Sabbath become sunset to sunset. Yeah, I mean, a.m. to a.m. Then, uh, what else they got out here? A bunch of chicken on Passover. Yeah, oh, I forget the mashed potato, chicken, okay. with a uh, uh, little corn in the side, and a little kick. That little kick, what you call it? Overpass. Not Passover, overpass. The chicken. You understand? It, right. Deacon Ithon, that scripture that you just read there was crystal clear. And any of us that's, that's receiving that, to say to ourselves, thank you for bringing that out because this is, this is an opportunity for me to save my life because you're warning me of what the most I said in the Bible. But instead of that, they're going to they're gonna look at that and say, nigga, I hate you. So that means they don't believe the scriptures. They don't believe the Bible. That's what you really have to understand. They don't, wanna, they don't want correction. They don't want to hear nothing from the Bible at all. Yeah, but you heard that statement, I was loyal to Christ. Nigga, you that never see Christ. BS, man. Nigga, you never see BS. Christ. If you would have seen Christ, you would have seen us. You understand? We came from him. <clears throat> the hell are you talking about? But I mean, loyal to right. Christ. But, but, now, but, but, exactly. Ahead. But what I'm listen to what I'm actually saying. The words that we're reading out of the Bible are not our words. 
The words is coming out of here straight from the Bible. How in the world are you going to listen to that? Supposedly, listen to that and be angry at the messenger for telling you what the most I said. You, got, you are 100% pure demon. I'm going to give an example. You ever be on the street teaching and gay people walk by or come up to the camp? Say, I'm going I'm to I'm 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 make believe, okay, I'm the gay guy. Say homosexuality is wrong. I need to change. Somebody say it. Say it. Oh, you want to kill me? They want to kill me. They want to kill me. You're evil. You ever notice they do that? They said, they, they said, what the hell is wrong with you? Right. They want to kill me. Right. Not what the most I said. They want to kill me. Any type of correction is translated in their mind as hatred and death and murder. That's, I'm like, yo, what the hell is wrong with you? Are you are you on drugs? We just said change. What is wrong with you? That's the same spirit these people that left God. You're feminine. You read a scripture that says if you break the law, you get death. Oh, they're wishing death on me and my wife. Oh, God. Are you kidding me? You stupid. And you know the, and, and you know the reason. Yeah, black yeah. devils. You know the reason why they cry out. He said he's not black. Hold it. You know the reason? Understand, because it's not said directly to us. It's said in the open for everybody else to hear it, for their simple, stupid behinds to line themselves up with that mess and try to bring a coup together to come against the messenger. Well, it did work. The coup did come, and now we have to get, now the FBI is involved. For all, and don't, don't think we don't have your videos. Everything's downloaded, you evil. See, if I wasn't online, but then somebody might, no, y'all won't record me, will you? I'm going to drop some words. Y'all don't want to hear it. <laughs> Where are we at, Officer Leon? Verse 9. We are in verse 9. Revelation 21 and verse 9. Come on. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues. That's what we read a few weeks ago in Revelation 16 about the destruction that comes upon America and the UK. Go ahead. And talk with me, saying, come hither. I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. See that? I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Now jump back up to verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now jump back to verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither. I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. So the bride, the lamb's wife, is New Jerusalem that's coming down from heaven. Now, we read Jeremiah 3.14. Let's read it again. Jeremiah 3.14 is the precept. Jeremiah 3.14. Turn, O backsliding children. Turn, O backsliding children. Come on. Save the Lord. For I am married unto you. For I am married unto you. Was that it? That's it. Second Corinthians 11 and 2, please. Remember, we're going there because to come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Second Corinthians 11 and 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So we're being prepared just like a bride is preparing herself for that marriage day. We are preparing ourselves to meet our husband, the Lord. Okay. We are the virgins. Like I said in Matthew about the 10 virgins, five were wise, five were foolish. Now I pray that those of us that have remained fall into the five wise virgins. Read on. Revelation chapter 21 and verse Nine, ten. ten. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the, that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So it says he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. Go to Isaiah 2 and 2. I just want to talk about that great and high mountain. Isaiah 2 and 2. Mm. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord shall, and the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established where? In the top of the mountain. In the top of the mountain. The top, top. The top, top. 
of the mountains. You're going to have to look up to the kingdom of the Lord. Ain't going to be no looking vertical. You're going to have to look up. It's going to be the highest city on the planet. You're going to see it for miles and miles and miles. We don't. And shall be exalted above the hills, mm -hmm. and all nations shall flow unto it. And all nations shall flow unto it. Now, that part right there, people often get confused because they say, see, all nations come into Jerusalem. Really? Give me Jeremiah 3 and 17. Jeremiah 3. I'm hearing myself. Jeremiah 3, verse 17 and 18. Jeremiah 3, verse 17. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. Here comes. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it. And all the nations. That's what we just read. And all nations shall be gathered unto it. Go ahead. To the name of the Lord. To Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imaginations of their evil heart. Now watch verse 18 explain the all nations. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. Why? And because the house of Judah and Israel will be coming from where? All nations. Go ahead. They shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. So this is explained the bottom of Isaiah 2 and 2. From there, let's go from there. Give me, let's go back to Revelation 21. Revelation 21 and verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. And showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So now people often ask, so it still says descending out of heaven. I'm going to show you that a little later on in the chapter, why it's saying that. But from there, read on. Verse 11. Having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high. So now he's going to describe the kingdom. Go ahead. And had 12 gates. 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. There's 12 black angels standing at those 12 gates. Go ahead. And names written thereon, mm -hmm. which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So on the gate to the kingdom of heaven, the only names written atop those gates are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There's no gate called Negro Baptist. There's no gate called Latino Catholic. Those things don't exist. Those things do not, those denominational names that your parents go by was all concocted by their enemies, the so-called white man. Whether it's Jehovah Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, uh, Protestant, Mormon. Isn't Jap uh, Gladys Knight a Mormon? Yeah, she a Mormon. Uh, whatever. Uh, let's, even Islam, let's throw that in there too. Rastafarianism, all that garbage. There's no name called Rastafarianism on the gate to the kingdom of heaven. None of those names. None of those names. So read that again. It had a wall great and high. It had 12 gates. It had the gates 12 angels. And names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Right. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the That's a total of how many? Twelve. Twelve gates. Go ahead. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. So the, the walls of the city had twelve foundations. The foundation is the ground. Go ahead. And in them, the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. So their names of the twelve, whoever they are, their names will be etched in the twelve foundations, this, which is around the kingdom of God on earth. Go ahead. And he that talked with me. Had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. So it's saying the length of the kingdom, and the, the length, and the what's breadth, uh, the, how do we say this word? The width, right, is this equal length. It says the height of it are equal. It's like a perfect um, square. <clears throat> Go ahead. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, and hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. Now, this is beyond our understanding, because the regular cubit for us is like two 
two feet for a cubit or three. Some books say two, some say three. But let me show you something. Go to Second Ezra 5.52 to show that we can't go by today's measurements. Second Ezra 5.52 to 54. A cubit today is different than back in the day. Second Ezra chapter 5 and verse 52. Say unto her, Wherefore art not, wherefore are not they whom thou hast now brought forth like? Those that were before, but less of stature. And she shall answer thee, They that be born in the strength of youth are of one fashion, and they that are born in the time of age, when the womb falleth are otherwise. Faileth are otherwise. Consider thou therefore also how that ye are less of stature than those that were before you. You see that? You are less of stature than those which were before you. Was that it? That's it. So showing you that size was different back in the past compared to now. Okay? It says as time goes on, we get smaller and smaller. That's the next verse. Verse 55. Go ahead. And so are they that strength of youth. So that lets you know Ezra and them was bigger than we are now. Okay, so we're getting smaller and smaller. You hear that, Ruben? <laughs> we're just getting smaller. <laughs> so when we are changed, these little bodies we got, we going that's why I said that measuring of the cubit is gonna be astronomical for the size of an angel. Okay, everybody with me on so far? Let's go back to Revelation 21. And we're in verse 18. Verse 18. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, mm. like unto clear glass. Wow. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second, sapphire, the third, uh, chalcedony, chalcedony, the fourth, an emerald, the fifth, sardonyx, the sixth, sardius, the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, beryl. The ninth, a topaz. The tenth, a uh, chrysaparis. Yeah. Chrysap <laughs> Chrys <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The eleventh, a jacinth. The twelfth, an amphi amphius. amethyst. Amethyst. So now you got to think about it. We are so used to concrete, living around concrete and all that. The most high knows that these elements have a, help me out with some words here so I don't say the wrong thing. These elements have a different, um, He used the word vibration or spirit. Um, mm, it affects us different. Aura, I like Val that word. Value? Huh? Value. No, or not aura. value. Not value. It, 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 if, you know things, elements affect the body. Resonation, okay. It's like drinking out of a paper cup or a gold cup. Yes, yes. I like that, that, that example. It, 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 it affects us differently. Like we're so used to being around concrete and all that. Just being around gold and all these elements, it'll, it'll deal with us on another level to deal with the spiritual world. That's all I can say. I'm, I'm small stature. I don't know. I see it through a glass dimly. That's the thought. Huh? Yes. Yeah, I don't know about those. If those, <laughs> those ain't real, but, you know. <laughs> yes, the same thing when you read in Exodus about the uh, ephod. The same elements that's going to be with the kingdom of heaven on earth. Yes. What verse are we at now? That was verse uh, 20. This is 21. No, that is real, ain't that real? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where we at? Verse 21. Go ahead. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. Hmm. And the street of the city was pure gold. And it was transparent glass. Hmm. As it were, transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein. But the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. So you go inside, you think you're going to see another building inside those gates. But it says there's no temple in there. It's only the Lord and the Father in there. Go ahead. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon. What verse are you at? That was verse 20. This is verse read it, 23. Read it again. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the lamb is the light thereof. So now it means exactly what it says. What it says, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the lamb is the light thereof. That's 1 John 1 and 5. Get that? 1 John 1 and 5. 
1 John 1 and 5. This then is the message which we have heard of you and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So God is light. So when it says back in Revelation, for the glory of God did lighten it and the Lamb is the light thereof, it means exactly that. Now give me Isaiah 30, 26, because you the thought may be, so we're not going to have a sun, we're not going to have a moon. Yes, we are. There's going to be a sun. There's going to be a moon. There's going to be stars. But in the temple, they're not going to need the light of the sun or the light of the moon. Read that. Isaiah 30 and verse 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. So in the kingdom, the moon's going to be as bright as the sun, and the sun's going to be seven times brighter. But within the gates to the kingdom, they're not going to need that light. And they're not going to need the light of the sun nor the light of the moon because God himself and Christ will be the light therein. Let's go back. Revelation 21 and 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all day, at all by day, for there shall be no night there. Now, I had him keep reading for a purpose. Because verse 24 and 25, And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. Here it comes. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. Let's go to Isaiah 60, and we're going to read verse 5 through 10, I believe, or 5 through 11. This is going to explain it. So like we always say, uh, the New Testament is an abbreviated version of the Old Testament. The Old Testament goes into a lot more detail on things. Watch. Isaiah 60 and 5. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea shall be covered, converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. When it says the forces of the Gentiles, it means the wealth of the Gentiles. Go ahead. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. Mm -hmm. The drama dromedaries. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. All they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Neb Nebuith shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud, and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel. Because he hath glorified thee. Now this is what we were reading in Revelation 21. Keep going. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. Now this is why I wanted to wait. Because when it talked about the kingdom cup descending from heaven, it's just saying that's how beautiful it's going to look. Go ahead. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee. Slavery, colonialism. But in my favor... Have I had mercy on thee? Mm -hmm. Christ there died on the cross for us. Go ahead. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. Why? That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. Now let's hold that. Pause that. Go right back to Revelation 21 again. Right. That's why they were saved. Go right back. Revelation 21 and verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there, and there shall in no wise enter anything that... That was it. Oh. Go back. I didn't want you to keep going. I'm still dealing with Isaiah 60. Yes, sir. Isaiah 60 and 11. Isaiah 60 and 11. So Isaiah 60 and 11 goes with Revelation 21, verse 24 and 25. Bye. Right. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually, 
they shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. Go ahead. For the nations and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So when we send our men out to gather the kings of the nations, and them nations don't want to come and bring their wealth, it says they shall be utterly wasted. And we ain't leaving the wealth there. We're going to bring it. We're going to drag their kings to the kingdom. Y'all understand that? Everybody going to see. Everybody going to bow down and submit that Christ is the Lord. Will you submit? Yea or nay? Speak now or forever hold your peace. I hope they say no. <laughs> we will not submit to a nigga. Very good. It's on now. Let's read on. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir tree, the pine tree. These are the elements with the trees we're going to use to help build things. Go ahead. And the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. See that? To beautify the place of my sanctuary. Go ahead. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. See that? That's what we're reading in Revelation. The place of his feet is the kingdom. Go ahead. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. Hey, find me the scripture, every tongue confess and every, every knee shall bow. An axe. Uh, it's not an axe, it's a Philippians. All right, find me that. Find me that. Because y'all be reading the New Testament don't be getting no understanding when you're reading. Watch this thing here. I want the part, every, every knee shall bow. That one. It ain't 12. Philippians 2 and verse 10. Thank you. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. See that? Every knee shall bow. So y'all think, y'all reading, go, everybody's going to bow. But how are they going to go? How are they going to bow? Go back to Isaiah 60. It's telling you right here. Isaiah 60 and verse 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee. Shall come bending unto thee. They're going to bend on their knees. Go ahead. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they're going to bow down themselves to the soul. That means their face is going to be at our feet. That's how low they're going to be. Go ahead. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. So this goes what we just read in Philippians 2 and 12. Will you submit that Jesus Christ is Lord? Yea or nay? Okay, and when they say nay, <laughs> out come the chains off with their heads. That's what's going to happen. I'm just keeping it real with you. Y'all got this fairy tale. Yeah, when Jesus returned, every tongue shall confess, every knee. Yeah, really? That's what's going to happen? Just like that, right? Not. That's why you need the Old Testament to explain things in detail for you. I don't like reading the Old Testament. Then you're going to always be confused and not know anything. Read on. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated. So that no man went through thee. Right, everyone hated us. I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings, and thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. That's right, go ahead. For brass I will bring gold, mm. and for iron I will bring silver. Come on. And for wood, brass, and for stones, iron. I will also make thy offices peace. So we're going to have offices in the kingdom. Don't think we just made that up. We're going to have it in the kingdom too. Go ahead. And thine exactors righteousness. And we're going to have tax collectors. Collect the tax from the Arabs. Get the tax from the Chinese. Collect the tax. That's the wealth that's going to come up to us. Okay. And they, they better not hold nothing back either. Go ahead. Violence shall be no more, shall no more be heard in thy land. Wasting nor destruction within thy borders. Now, right, within our borders ain't going to be no violence. But outside of our borders, when we got to take them down, there's going to be a lot of violence. Right, there's going to be a lot of uh, 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 terrors being uh, committed to make, or don't think nations going to come bowing to, to us and the Lord that easily. They're not. Go ahead. Right. Violence shall be. I'm gonna, let me prove that. Give me that in Revelation uh, 11, 18 about the nations. Some of y'all got this little Christian thing on you. Ooh, everyone loves Jesus. You simple as hell. Revelation 11 and verse 18. Is that what I want? And the nations were angry. You can stop right there. That's the point. This is talking about the second coming of the Lord. It says the nations were angry. 
So what do you mean they're going to bow down willingly? They're not going to bow. It says they're angry when he comes back. Oh, my pastor never told me that. Your pastor's a dummy. Go back. Isaiah 60 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. Mm, go ahead. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light and thy God thy glory. Didn't we just read that in Revelation 21? Because in the temple, the Lord is going to be that light. Go ahead. Verse 20, thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. That's talking about our understanding. That's what that's talking about. Go ahead. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and, thy, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. You're right. And he's going to wipe away all tears from our eyes. Go ahead. That's what it means. And the days of thy mourning shall be ended. Go ahead. Thy people also shall be all righteous. See, and you know why I wanted to get to that point? Because a lot of times sisters go, I don't know, I just, that part about seven women shall take hold of it. I, 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 I just got a problem. Look, says, sister, the Bible says, thy people also shall be what? All righteous. righteous. That means men and women. Ain't going to be no nigga them going on. We all going to be righteous, the men and the women. You ain't going to have no deadbeat daddy syndrome. None, none of that's happening ever again. And we're going, to be, we're going to be filthy rich. Rich, we're going to be the top, top, top nation. The top, 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 top. You mean the top? Yes, the top, top. And the women going to be happy. You know the women are when you ain't got no money? They give you a hard time, right, brothers? Let them get a lot of money. Watch how, oh, yes, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Yes, Lord. Then when you broke, you that nigga around the corner. That's how they are. They know it's true. Go ahead. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planning, the work of mine hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand. That's how many kids we're going to have. Go ahead. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. That's why seven women shall take hold of one man. He said, I'm, I'm going to hasten the growth of the Israelites again. Like that. All the women they got. There's going to be more women going to outnumber men once again. Thank the Lord for that thing. Let's go back to Revelation 21. And we're going to do that song. This is a man's world. <laughs> but it will be nothing. Where we at? Where are we? Revelation 21, 21 and verse 25. 25. Revelation 21 and verse 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, but there shall be no night there. Right, no night. We read, just read that in Isaiah 60, verse 20. Write that down. Go ahead. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into We're it. We're going to bring all their wealth because everything belongs to us. The world was made. For, can you get me the proper scripture now about the world was made for Israel? Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 54. And after these, Adam also. Whom thou made is Lord of all thy creatures. Of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou... Did it again. He read the wrong scripture again. <laughs> Tell her he was building it up. <laughs> First, wait, let, 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 let me hear 55. Let me hear it. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord. I'm looking at the video, and I said, get the right. So he gave, read the wrong one. Sorry, and I don't Bishop. be looking at it with him. I'm trusting him that he get me the right one. Go ahead, right, Bishop. Verse 55. And all this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. I like that. Thou made the world for our sake. Now give me the other one, 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven. Write this one down. Let me write it down. I know you're going to let me down again. Where are we going? Second Ezra. 7-Eleven. Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 11. Because for their sakes, I made the world. Yes, and that was it. That was it. So the world was made for us. That's what we all have to understand. We got to get out of that low self-esteem. The planet was made for us. So, so Bishop, that means that these nations who got all these diamonds, we're going to say, uh, thank you for holding it for me. Yes. 
Hey, don't think it's far fetched. Remember when, when we left Egypt? Remember, said we took all the Egyptians' wealth. We saw they, and they gave us jewelry and all that because it was ours anyway. It belongs to us. So, what verse we at? Revelation twenty one and verse twenty six. Mm. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Come on. And there shall in no wise enter into anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination. That's what we read earlier in uh, verse 8. Go ahead. Or maketh a lie. Mm. He's serious about that thing. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that, def that defileth. Go ahead. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination mm -hmm. or maketh a lie. All them lies. You're not getting into the kingdom. Go ahead. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Give me that in Revelation 3, 5. They which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Actually, give me Daniel 12 and 1 first. Then we'll go to Revelation 3 and 5. I'm going to Old Testament. I'm coming to New Testament. Only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. So this lets you know only we're getting into the kingdom is Israel. That's it. Read that. Daniel 12 and 1. And at that time, you better thank God your daddy's in there. I know some of your daddies left home, but you better thank the Lord. I, Papa was a rolling stone. Wherever he laid his hat was his home. But thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You better thank the Lord your dad. Because so remember that when you were growing up? My daddy white. And I got nice hair. Look at you. That nigga that shit you got. Well, thank the Lord my daddy was a nigga. Right. I praise his name. And you. Go ahead. I'm thinking about that. <laughs> Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince. Yes, it's Michael the archangel. Go ahead. Which standeth for the children of thy people. He's the captain of the host of the army of God. Go ahead. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. That's when them bombs hit, them nuclear explosions. This is the hour of temptation. Go ahead. Was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. At that time, thy people. Who's he speaking to Daniel? Thy people, Daniel. Who's Daniel's people? The Israelites. The Israelites. Thy people shall be delivered. Go ahead. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. See that? Everyone that's found written in the book. Meaning the Lamb's book of life. From there, Revelation 3 and 5 now. Revelation 3 and 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. You see that? And I will not blot. If we keep the works of the Lord, that's his laws, statutes, commandments, he's not going to blot our name out. What are you going to say, y'all? Hey, that's heavy because it's letting you know that you can get blotted out of this truth. Yes. That's what the Most High is saying. With, 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 with your wickedness, you can, have your, you can be erased. You don't think Judas Iscariot was blotted out? He was blotted out. Dathan, Korah, and on, they were. This, hey, let's get that. Exodus 32, 32. Here it is. Moses told you about the, the Lord, the book of life. You think it's a new thing. I know it's always been there. The Lord always had this book. Exodus 32, 32 and verse 33. Exodus 32, verse 32. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee out of thy book. Which thou hast written. So he had the book was even like the, the Moses said, Lord, if you don't forgive the Israelites, then blot me out. Moses was a he was a heavy dude. And Israel gave him hell. All the murmuring, complaining, the, 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 give me some more words, some more backbiting and whispering, hatred against Moses. Yeah, YouTube. He said, <laughs> Yet now, read it again. Yet now. If thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. Now, that don't mean God forgave everybody, because when you read Exodus, the Lord killed hundreds of thousands of Israelites. But at this point, he was going to destroy all the Israelites. And Moses said, please, Lord, don't destroy us all. Mother lost the Lord, Moses, I'll start over with you. Moses said, no, Lord, don't do that. Spare them, please. Please spare the rest, because you killed so many. So don't think just because Moses prayed, he left all them wicked niggas around. No, no, they got put to death. We could do all the praying we want. Lord, forgive these wicked niggas. Lord, gonna go. Oh no, this one gonna go. That one gonna go. I'm I'm moving them out. Then I'm gonna destroy them. That's what he's gonna do. Watch the next verse. And the Lord said unto Moses, 
Whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. See that? So all of Moses, it don't mean nothing. The Lord said, yeah, yeah, that's a nice prayer, Moses. But listen what I'm saying to you. Whoever sins, I'm blotting them out. They died in their sins to blot it out. Dathan, Korah, that whole crew. How many of it was it? 250 princes of Israel blotted out. Put to death them and their wives and kids. And 14,000 others that followed them. So y'all keep following these wicked people on YouTube and Facebook. Shame on you. We're going to keep doing the work of the Lord. Now, did we finish Revelation 21, Officer Leon? No, sir. Let's go back. We're almost done. I know we're almost done. Revelation 21 and verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into anything that defileth, neither whatsoever, whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So let's get a Lord a hand and say, Amen! All praises to the Most High. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, man. Read that scripture before, before the one you just read. Uh, in Exodus. Yeah, the one before you just. Yeah, whatever, the, whatever it was, but the one before you give you ended with that. Revelation three and five. That one. Yeah. Exodus thirty-two and verse uh, thirty-two. Mm -hmm. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me. I pray yeah, thee. Yeah, you know what's so heavy behind that, uh, brothers and sisters? Think about it. These princes weighs up against Moses. That's like today. When you're looking at today, you know what Moses is teaching us? Don't, add, don't addict yourself to nobody. You understand? Don't addict yourself to nobody. But look at that weighs up. That was there. There were princes, man. But the Lord wants you to know something. This walk is who over, overcome it. You understand? You said don't what? Say it again. And this walk. You said don't. Yeah, who so? No. <laughs> you have to overcome it. You have to overcome your sin. You have to overcome the world. You have to overcome everything. So world. you're saying for us not to get attached to attached anybody. Attached to anybody. Because your friend could yeah. get you killed. Yeah, your friends can get you, you killed. You can love that friend, male or female, so much. When your friend leaves the truth, you're so simple. You go with your friend. Yeah. Now his name or her name blotted out. Your name yeah. blotted out too because you ran behind him. Yeah, remember, they were not regular dudes, man. They were princes. They're well renowned, well known among Israel. Then look how the Lord destroyed them for their weakness. So, your brothers, man, be very mindful, man. What would these brothers do about God's commandments? You heard any complainer? These spirits did not make it in the kingdom, man. Warren, they was not make, they're not going to make it to the kingdom, man. You understand? We're here to fix problems, not to complain. You understand? So, pay attention. Right, that's who that's who Satan always use. He always used the princes. When he said princes, it means somebody of stature in the congregation. All right, captains, you know, officers of fifty, you know, somebody up there in, or or a deacon or a bishop. You understand? That's who he use. He's not gonna use regular um, brothers that just come in, come yeah. in here a year, two years ago. They can't do no damage. The devil is trying to do damage. That's what he's trying to do. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why Christ said to Peter, Satan has desired to have you right. and to sift you like wheat because right. he wanted to use Peter because he was the top uh, apostle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, early on, Bishop, you had brought out concerning in the kingdom, we're not going to be, we're not going to be feeble or we're not going to be, how this, how this say? we ain't going to be sick, we ain't going to be walking around with Cain or none of that. I want to show you all that scripture that proved that. Go to Deuteronomy 34 and 7. Was in Revelation 21 and 4, where it says, And God shall wipe away all thy tears from thy eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither shall there be neither, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. All right? Meaning what? No, we are, ain't going to be no more arthritis. You understand? Ain't going to be no more pain, period, for, for the nation of Israel. You know, but read that scripture for me. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 7. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. So Moses was 120 years old, right? That's a, that's a long time, but read on. His eye was not dim. What it says his eye wasn't dim. When, when, you, when you're 120 years old, what, what usually happens? You can't see properly. 
your eyes start to get chinky small you know old people you with old old age catching up on you okay but that didn't happen to moses you know what i mean and moses was that that wasn't even the kingdom as yet but it showed you that the lord was dealing with moses on a different level you know he aged different from from everybody else he wasn't aging and getting weak and arthritis and feeble and shaking. He wasn't aging like that. You know, but read on. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. What's his natural force? His natural force, it, it wasn't abated, meaning it didn't leave him. You understand? Meaning Moses could drum kick you all, man. You know? <laughs> he going to drum kick you. He'll lift you and pelt you across the room like... You know, you couldn't test him, man. You know, he was he was 120 years old, but he was a, he was he his, he was not weak like you know when you get old you get weak and feeble. You know, you could barely you walking with a cane and shaking. That was not Moses. You know what I mean? So in the kingdom, we all gonna be we all we ain't gonna be going through none of that. We gonna we ain't losing no eyesight. We ain't gonna need no glasses. We ain't going to be got, having no arthritis pains, no back pains. You understand? No pain no more. You understand? No going to no doctors no more. Oh, All right? That means that, that we don't have to worry about the white men anymore. Right. We ain't got to go to no doctors no more. But the nations, they're going to have their doctors set up for them. You know what I mean? <laughs> Captains? Any announcements? Oh, no one. Wow. Wow. This is a new thing in the earth. No announcement. What about. Oh, you do have a now. See? Online. Don't believe it. Oh, okay. Officers, are there any announcements? Wait a minute. Do we know about these announcements before you make them? So that no strange thing comes out? You, you spoke to them? Oh, okay. Yes, go ahead. Canada. Go ahead, Canada. All right, I'll praise to the most high. So, on Original Royalty, we got two new albums up right now. We got the uh, the Kingdom, uh, Kingdom Music Volume 2, which is Nudity, and also we, we do have um, the High Holy Album. So, it's, it's jam-packed with all High Holy Days music, you know, it's it's jam packed. So check it out on originalwalty.com. Well, it's going to be open up soon, Tom. So go there, check it out, and also buy something too. All right? All praise and Mosa. Also, the album's been offered for free. It's for free. All right? So, so download. Okay, was that it? Yes, uh, right. now I got one more. Uh, uh, Passover and Alena. <laughs> oh, that was it? Hey, ASAP, you got something? And new people. Any new people? Shalom, brother. What's your name? Where you from? Shalom, leadership. My name is Hogan's, and I'm from the Bronx. How long have you been watching us? About six months. What made you decide to come down? Well, like, the question, like, I think the question should be what made me decide to join, like, and start keeping, like, the Sabbath. Everything I've been through in the streets, like, I don't know if you heard about Webster, Webster Avenue and everything. Yes. Yeah. I went through a lot, and, and I grew up in, like, a Baptist church, you know? Since a young and I've been searching for the truth and everything, but nothing ever made sense to me. But six months ago, like my cousin put me on, you know, started watching and like, like I, I tell you, every Sabbath tears couldn't stop falling out of my eyes, you know. Like, all oh, praise it to the Most High. I say like, this is the tr this that this where I belong. So I decided to come through today. All oh, praise, praise, brother. Welcome home. Welcome home. Hey, what tribe are you? I was born and raised in Haiti, so I'm Levi, you know. Levi! Ça passe, ça passe! Mila, mila, mila. Welcome home.
That's it. No more new people. Shalom, brother. What's your name? Where you from? Uh, from from Haiti. From Levi, Haiti? Levi, Levi. <laughs> but that's my third uh, time here, you know. Your third time. Uh, third time, you know. But, uh, okay, so you really like it. Let me tell something. That's uh, as you oh, say, the John three verse thirty. You shall know the truth that you shall start for free. Oh, okay. uh, here I get well. We shall be free that. Oh, I praise. just want to. Yes, yes, yes. I really love man. This oh, music. You understand oh, that, right, yeah. Lava? Yes. <laughs> All praises. Glad All you right. could. Listen. All praise to the Most High. Thanks. That's it. All right. So everybody got bread and wine? So we're going to break bread and drink wine in honor of our Lord and Savior laying on his life so that you too can have life. For I received of the Lord that which also I ask if everybody got bread and wine. Y'all still passing it out? Shalom, sis. Where are you visiting from? Shalom, leadership from uh, DC Camp. DC Camp? Yes, sir. How long you been with DC Camp? Four years. Four years? Yes, sir. So you're a veteran there. What's your name? Noria. This okay. Noria. How's the vibration there? How's the sisters there? It's better. It's gotten a lot better. Um, it's gotten better? It's gotten better. <laughs> Y'all got rid of the troublemakers? Yes. Well, or there's still some troublemakers there? It's gotten better. <laughs> I'll just say that. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Glad you could visit. Glad you could visit. Shalom, sis. What's Shalom. your name? Where are you from? Um, my name is Samira. I'm also from the D.C. camp. How long you been with the D.C. camp? Four years. Four years, too. Another veteran. How's the sisters there? They're really nice. It's really good. Really nice? No more troublemakers? I don't think so. You don't think so? <laughs> Say their name. <laughs> okay. Glad you could visit, sis. Glad you could visit. Oh, yeah, Deacon Nathan doesn't have no wine. I tell him they don't care about Philly right now. No, no, they bring it for him. Okay, okay. That's it. Everybody got bread and wine now? You good? For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen.
And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His word. His word. His word. His word. His word. His Offline announcements. I'm ready for love Just racing and jumping for six I quickly can give up my freedom To be my own Cause all about me The joy and all the pain and all that it takes to stay. Israel, Ooh. Are you Israel, yeah, yeah, yeah. We going downtown. We going downtown. We going there, fellowship and to do your will. We going downtown. We going downtown. We going there, fellowship and to do your will. And we don't even care. No, we don't even care at all. Yeah, we don't even care. I go anywhere you want me to. I'll do your way, way, way. You have your way, way, way. Take all my time, yeah, take my mind. If you may, may, may. It's simple and show your yours. So you can have more, more, more. You take all I got, so I don't write.